He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I know you can do better than that. Let the neighbors hear you. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to this streamed Easter worship service. I'm John Rickert, pastor of Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Newark, Delaware. Just a quick reminder, we still have to pay our bills, so you can ch send your offering checks in made out to Our Redeemer Lutheran Church. You can send them to Laurel directly if you have her address and if not send them to the church our address is 10 Johnson Road Newark Delaware 19713 so you can just send them to that address 10 Johnson Road Newark Delaware 19713 one of the blessings uh, side blessings of these streamed worship services is it brings a truth that we often kind of overlook. And that is that the church is not really a building, but it is the people. And so this Easter, though we cannot gather in our church building like we would love to do, nonetheless, we are able to gather in the Lord through these electronic means to worship on this very special and holy day. The liturgy for our worship service is going to appear on the screen right in front of you, and so you can join right in. And without any further ado, let us join in worshiping on this blessed holy day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live. And will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely. But he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks, for you answer me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Glory, Glory be to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us rejoice in this wonderful gospel truth by singing together, Jesus Christ is risen today.
we join in confessing our sins to our Heavenly Father. Why have you come here today? We have come to worship and praise our Holy Triune God, because the Son has risen from the grave. The Holy Triune God is perfect and righteous, with eyes too pure to look upon sin. Are you without sin? No, we are sinners. I too am a sinner. Let us confess our sins, imploring the Father, for the sake of his Son, to forgive us. Lord God Almighty, we, we confess, confess that, that by our very nature we are sinners, sinners that, that the scriptures are true when they say we are conceived in iniquity. We have sinned against you by our own thoughts, by our own words, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. But we are sincerely sorry for our sins and ask, not based on our lives, but based on the perfect life, innocent suffering, death, and wondrous resurrection of our Lord Jesus, that you be merciful and gracious to us poor sinful beings, and grant us your grace and forgiveness of all our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has forgiven us all our sins because of the life, sufferings, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We are forgiven for Christ's sake. We have received the righteousness of Christ. We have been adopted as children of our Heavenly Father. Rejoice, for we can now enter the presence of the Father. Because of Christ, he can behold us. Because of Christ, he loves us. Because of Christ, our sins have been blotted out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We join in our intro it. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established, the Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Christ, have, have mercy upon us. us. Lord, have, have mercy upon us. us. We join now in our hymn of praise, This is the Feast.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we celebrate today the victory of Jesus Christ over death. As we now hear your word of grace, inspire us by the power of your spirit, that we may respond with joy and boldness in declaring our union with Christ, share in the feast of his victory, live in the power of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our first lesson comes from Acts chapter 10. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in our gradual. Christ, Christ has, has risen, risen from, from the, the dead. dead. God, God the, the Father, Father has crowned him with glory and honor. And he has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Our second reading is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in our Alleluia and verse for the day. Alleluia! Alleluia. Christ, Christ Jesus abolished death and brought, and brought life, life and, and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia! Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for the fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen from the dead. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in singing, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, our sermon hymn.
Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our text for today is taken from our gospel lesson. I read again Matthew 28, verse 5. But the angel said to the woman, women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Here ends the reading of our text. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, you forgot from the beginning of the service. Belt it out. Let the neighbors know. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I've preached for over three decades now, which means I have preached a lot of Easter sermons. And I don't know for a fact, but I am pretty darn sure that I have started every single Easter sermon with that same affirmation of faith. And why not? It is the whole sum total of what we believe. It just sums it all up. What we believe, what we teach, what we confess, not only about Easter, but actually our whole faith is wrapped up in that. And that is why, that is what Easter is about. And that is why every Sunday we really are celebrating Easter. In fact, Easter is why we worship on Sundays and not some other day of the week. Each Sunday, each Lord's Day, we gather in commemoration of the celebration of Easter. We commemorate and celebrate the, that Jesus rose from the grave. And when he did that, he conquered death and he destroyed him who has the power over death, that is the devil. He paved for us the way for our own resurrection on the last day when Christ returns. And then we will join him and all believers in glory. This is really something worth celebrating. Of course, this Easter is different. It's different from any I've celebrated in the past, and I'm sure that it is the same for you. For the first time in my life, I will not be in a church building on Easter Sunday morning. And that, of course, is because of this coronavirus, novel coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever. Instead, we are celebrating electronically with this streamed service. And I have to say that I'm, I'm actually quite pleased and impressed with how this has worked out for us. You know, our Good Friday service was just a couple of days ago, and we've already had 50 views on that. And just last Sunday, Palm Sunday, we have had 77 views of that worship service. So the Lord is good even at a time of social distancing, even when things are difficult. We look forward to Easter uh, when we, uh, all, all the time. When we wake up on Easter morning, the celebration begins. We get ready for worship, putting on our Sunday best, our best clothing. At our Redeemer, we typically have an Easter breakfast, and we all enjoy that. There's wonderful food that the, the members make, and uh, all of the greetings that we do when we meet each other. We always say what? We say, he is risen. He is and risen indeed. That's Hallelujah. A, that's what happens on Easter, isn't it? The sermon, of course, is all about our Easter hope. After the worship service, we often go home and gather with family and friends for another big meal, maybe a late lunch or an early dinner, and uh, talk about all sorts of things. This year... All of those gatherings will probably be more like what we're doing here. There'll be electronic gatherings. I suspect people will gather around their, their phones or their iPads or, or their computers or whatever and get in touch with their children or their brothers and sisters or their parents or whomever their, their loved ones are. So that gathering is still a good thing, even if we are socially distanced. Maybe you've already replaced your our Easter breakfast that we would have at church with a large Easter breakfast feast there at home. Hash browns or, uh, an egg, uh, you know, some casserole, egg casserole, or toad in the hole. I always like that, you know. But, you know, whatever is uh, your feast would be uh, perhaps already had, sweet rolls or whatever. All in all, though, we look forward to a great day. 
and Easter seldom disappoints. It was sure different that first Easter, wasn't it? The ladies walked to the tomb of Jesus, expecting to find a corpse, the corpse of their Lord. It was a sad morning for them. Easter morning, though, begin, while beginning in sorrow, didn't stay that way. Boy, were they in for a surprise. An angel came and rolled back the stone. Now, we should know that the stone that this angel rolled away was not to help the Lord. It wasn't because Jesus was standing there knocking on the stone saying, somebody move this thing. Please send an angel here. No, Jesus was already gone. The reason the angel rolled that stone away was so that people could get in and see the empty tomb. And believe me, they began to flock there, starting first with these ladies. Then, of course, the apostles came. Then many more came, all trying to see this empty tomb. So the angel came back and rolled the stone so that the ladies would be able to get in there and see for themselves that Jesus was missing. Everyone who looks for a dead Jesus is bound to be disappointed because Jesus is not dead. He is risen. Hallelujah. To find Jesus, you must listen to the words of the angels as they spoke to those ladies that morning. That angel said, Jesus is not here. He has risen as he said. You have to look for a resurrected Jesus to find the real Jesus, the historical Jesus. Do you want to find Jesus? Then seek him where he is. Paul tells us in our epistle lesson, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Jesus not only rose from the grave, but he ascended to heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father, resuming his rightful position, the position he had before time, the position as the second person of the triune God, co-equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit, co-eternal, co-everything else. This injunction of Paul's, though, to seek Christ where he is found, poses something of a problem for us. How are we to do this? He's in heaven. I'm here in Newark. He has the streets of gold. I have the streets of asphalt walking down those streets. But uh, people have addressed this thought. How do we do that? Are we supposed to try some sort of astral projection, some out-of-body experience? where we zoom up to glory and say howdy duty to Jesus? Are we to seek some sort of inner vision, look inside of us and hopefully find Christ within us? Or are we supposed to uh, maybe try some sort of pharmacological enhancement? So popular back in the 60s, let me tell you. Uh, of course, all of these things have been tried. And I only mention them really more tongue-in-cheek because none of them work. None of them is what Christ has told us to check on. They are efforts by man to achieve something that man cannot achieve. All these methods are false paths and never, never are recommended by God. We see Christ where he has promised to be found, and that is in his word and sacraments. One of the reasons uh, <clears throat> each Sunday is an Easter celebration is because it is in our Sunday worship services where we stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ as he comes to us in word and sacrament. We have his promise on it. We seek Christ seated at the right hand of the Father when we seek him in his word and sacrament. Of course, this year, we are not sharing the Lord's Supper and we are not baptizing anyone because of this uh, coronavirus and this social distancing. But we are still standing in the presence of Jesus Christ because we are still sharing his word. That 
primary means of grace, as I said in our Monday Thursday study. We certainly have overtones of the Lord's Supper when Jesus says, I am the bread of life. We certainly also have baptismal overtones when Jesus says, whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. But most fundamental is the word. <clears throat> so Peter confesses to Jesus when uh, Jesus does this whole uh, bread of life discourse and a whole lot of the, his disciples, his followers left because they just found it so hard when Jesus said, you have to eat my body and drink my blood. And they just, you know, found that uh, too difficult to understand, to believe. So a lot of them left and Jesus turned to the 12 and he says, what about you guys? Are you going to leave also? And Peter answers for all of them. He answers also for us. Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. John uh, And John 1 identifies that word of life, identifies it as Jesus. He is the word of God, which spoke all creation into existence. He is the word of God who has come into this world. He is the word of God, the word of promise to which we cling. And he is the word of God that even something like the coronavirus cannot stop. Where do Christians seek Christ? We seek him in the word. By means of the word, Christ has risen in our hearts. So Peter could write, and we have the prophetic word made fully confirmed to which we will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Isaiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, once wrote, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Well, the scriptures are where he has promised to be found. And he is near wherever and whenever his word is proclaimed. Yes, we prefer to hear the word as we gather with fellow believers in worship. And this is, of course, in harmony with the revealed word of God, where we are to remember the Sabbath day and we are not to neglect assembling ourselves together. But the powerful word of God is not limited to the public assembly. It goes out and accomplishes what God intends it to do. And it can go out through a book. It can go out through the internet. It can go out through a proclaimed sermon as we sit in a worship service. It can go out in a telephone call. It can go out in a letter that you send to your loved ones. The word of God accomplishes what God intends it to do. Today, the powerful word is assuring us that Jesus is living. Because he lives, we too shall live. His promises are as sure today as they were before the outbreak of this novel coronavirus. His promises of eternal life will continue to be dependable long after social distancing restrictions have been listed, lifted and COVID-19 is just a footnote in the history books like the great influenza uh, epidemic of 1918-1919. I can say this because Christ has risen. He has risen again. Hallelujah. We have Christ's very word on it. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Can stop. Mm -hmm. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. <coughs> let us let us pray. <clears throat> Let us pray, rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace. Let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. <clears throat> o risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we receive in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel and open our ears to hear with faith all that he has done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church and who will serve us in your name and with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our president, John, the governor of Delaware, Larry, the governor of Maryland, Tom, the governor of Pennsylvania, Phil, the governor of New Jersey, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, but forgetful of the vulnerable, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O risen Savior, across our nation so many are in prison. Bless all prison workers, that they may be humane and serve with integrity. Bless those incarcerated with hope for the future and amendment of life. Help them to serve their sentences with patience and trust in you, and bless their families who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth. We especially ask you to bless those we now name in our hearts. Give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O risen Savior, as pestilence spreads around our globe in the form of COVID-19, we ask that you be with our partner churches around the world, keeping their faith in you and the love of their neighbors strong. We especially remember today the Evangelical Lutheran Free Church in D Denmark and their president, Reverend Leif Jensen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in the same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us with Job the solemn expectation to cheer us. Our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our final hymn is, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Wait, I I forgot that you were going to say that, so you're going to have to introduce the hymn again. Our final hymn is, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. risen indeed. Alleluia. Live in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the Lord bless your Easter celebration. Amen.